Hey, it's Jamie from Crown Rebellion, and I'm here with Emmy Liu. Uh, Emmy Liu's name is internationally placed among the most prolific and innovative artists of our time. Perhaps the biggest endorsement of his creativity comes from the many celebrities and private collectors who have acquired his intriguing masterpieces. His imaginative concepts have found solace in corporate boardrooms as well as furnishing select international hotels. Just a couple of uh, well-known names that have said this about him. From Patti LaBelle, I love Emmy's paintings, especially the ballet pieces. I was trem tremendously impressed by the variety and intensity of themes that I saw at his Beverly Hills Gallery. Magic Johnson, your work, especially the jazz pieces, are incredibly impressive. I and Cookie enjoy the portrait you did for our family. Keep up the good work of, en of enriching our heritage. Denzel Washington, you do great colorful paintings which challenge our imagination. And we, today, are sitting in his gallery at Emmy Lou Galleries in Beverly Hills. So how did you become a part of Blada? Oh gosh, I got it through by way of Carmelita. We've known each other for over 15 years. And one day we're doing a big celebrity event here, and later she said, I might want to talk to you about uh, an organization you might want to get involved with. So we talked about it, and we thought it, would have, it was appropriate to have some of you people to, to do your videotaping here tonight. All right. Well, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. And then this is your gallery. Are all the paintings throughout the gallery yours? Everything. The, everything? It's one man show. I'm fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will definitely be taking a peek on what, what some of your art is later on. Thank you. And then, how did you get involved in art? Has it always been a part of your life? Since I was about three years. Three years. Uh, drawing, painting, and by uh, the support of my parents, who bought me a lot of materials, I was able to take it to another level as I got older. I went to university. And then I did my education part of it, which was completed in London. And after completion, I did some business in London, so I flew to California to look for greener pastures here. And has, have you found, is it greener pastures it's an evol It's a, an evolving process, <laughs> like for everybody. California is a very attractive place for actors, for everybody. Yeah. Everybody's an actor in Hollywood, yeah. meaning Los Angeles. <laughs> so we all come here for those pastures, but I took the course of creativity, visual creativity. So good. And then, have you found through your time, have you gone through any obstacles in your life with the art? And would you like to talk about any of that? I think the obstacles are more in commerce than the actual process of creating fine art. It's easier for me probably for a lot of other artists who paint, it's easier for them or for me to be in my studio creating what I love to do best. But uh, the process of marketing fine art is a very complex uh, uh, aspect because very few artists, by luck, happen to be either raised from very wealthy families so they can support their business. So what happens is that a lot of artists, either they're self-taught or educated, which I am, uh, they tend to find a way of surviving. Some artists prefer to live on their art. That's the most difficult part of being an artist because Selling art is not as easy as painting, as, as I mentioned earlier. But uh, my advice to a lot of artists is that you don't go by what people talk about what you can do, because they can always tell you the negative part of marketing an art business. But uh, you just do with your instinctive uh, uh, force that allows you to paint but not undermine your creativity by commercializing it. It's a kind of a, a quagmire because when you paint and you're going to sell, some people assume that you're painting to sell, but they forget that in that process you must be able to buy your materials. And the art materials happen to be, happen to be very expensive. Uh, very few artists are able every month to earn a living, a decent living, to just go and splash it on materials. They spend six months painting. 
I don't do that either, but I find time, especially at night, to paint my work. Do you take time each day to paint your work? Is there I like a certain... I try my best to spread out my daily activity, activities whereby at least the, the best four parts of the week, four days of the week, I must be in my studio at night. Because I tend to paint from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So while everybody's sleeping, maybe I'm still awake doing my own creative part. And, and do you get so involved into your own world as you're painting that no phones, you, you don't, no distractions, you're just into your world? That's why I prefer to render the nocturnal paradigm of hiding myself from everybody. Because at night, everything's kind of solid. It's, uh, it's quiet, it's serene, you know, you, you can do whatever you want without any interruptive uh, things that kind of take your, your mind away. It's very easy, it's especially, I'm sure a lot of artists here will agree, when you are painting, you are having a dialogue. It's, a, it's what do we call, I forgot the English word, it's like you're talking to yourself. It's, technically, when you're confronting your canvas from white, and that's what I tell a lot of my friends that creating fine art is like you being a semi god. It's not that you're god, but the process of seeing a white, a material that has nothing, to evolve that into something that looks like one of my favorite uh, painting from one of my artist friends over there. If you look at that canvas, you take it for granted, but it comes from a white perspective. It's all blank white. So when you paint alone, you're really conversing to yourself. How you create something from nothing to the visual, like she told me that that painting cap, cap I think it captures her childhood memories of, uh, I forgot what she told me, but something to do with a poetic rendering that she dwelt with the whole of her life. And she wanted, as she got older, she felt that that challenge should be uh, put in a on a canvas to be interpreted in her own perspective so that others can share her vision of childhood. So where do you get your inspiration for your art? I travel a lot. And I use a lot of live models in my studio. And uh, I go to a lot of places that people least expect me to go to. Because I just do it very discreetly. I, uh, I'm not a very pompous person by myself. Uh, I'm kind of a, I talk but I'm a very, very personal. I'm a very quiet person in that. When I'm like sketching, I just want to do it alone where people don't see what I'm doing. Because some people don't even want to sh feel like you are, you are actually doing a sketch of them in the public. So I try to travel a lot, go to neighborhoods, and, uh, and that, that's it. I do a lot of sketches. I'm a very quick sketch artist. So I do a lot of my work through, uh, through small pumps, like it's similar to what you're holding there. It's like a dictionary to me when I, something captures my, my mind. I just register it on a, a kind of a skate pad and then later I can develop it in my studio. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us.